All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab, a part of the Serious Angler Network. And as always, I'm your host, the captain, Andrew Full. And today we have an awesome episode for you. We're talking about a little Japanese technique um, that is slowly becoming more prominent in the fishing world, especially the tournament scene, and not really talked about all that much. It's something that I familiarized myself with last year and caught a lot of really big smallmouth on it. And uh, the guy we have coming on is somebody you might be familiar with, with cashing a ton of checks on the co-angler side. And probably you could consider him, if not call him, like the ultimate professional co-angler. We have Sakai Ushio joining us, um, who is off to a heart... <laughs> Heart, uh, a great start to start the season off here. And we're going to bring him on here in a second and talk about it. But uh, we're going to go through what the free rig technique is, how you set it up, and why it's different from some of the other common rigs that you see a lot of tournament anglers rig up and fish. So um, without me rambling on here more, let's get Sakai on and dive into the free rig technique. Hey, Sakai, how's it going? Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Good, man. It's uh, weird that you're, I, I shouldn't say weird that you're down in Alabama because you live like 30 minutes away from me normally right up here in Buffalo. But man, killer start to the season, huh? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I got a good draw, like a nice boulders. And then also uh, they brought me a right spot. And then I, yeah, I get a pretty decent fish over there yeah well you can't say that you've just been lucky this year though you've been on a roll for like i don't know five or six years now right couple wins bunch yeah. of top tens man you're crushing it <laughs> yeah uh i i, I think uh, because i got a good tournament routine and I also um i get my technique for more confidence like mm -hmm. like today we're talking about a free rig like um you know, the free rig is that uh, I can use it everywhere, like north, central, south, er er everywhere is like effective. Uh, and then especially Koanga me is like snagless and the finesse. I mean, let, let, let's let talking about, yeah, more detail for free yeah. rig and I, you know. Yeah, so we can dive right into it because obviously this right. is a technique that has caught you a lot of fish in a lot of tournament situations. Heck, you even caught them on my boat with me last summer, which really opened my eyes to it. And I had to go out and buy some baits to try and it's fun. So what is the free rig technique, Sakai? Yeah, um, it's just a simple setup. Like, um, looks like a drop shot or sinker with like you know circle eye hole and then like it just uh takes us rig you know like yeah. offset hook with whatever you want to you know pick the bait like crayfish shape i mean like or straight worm or rib, rib worm or you know even recently i uh started using like shut tail like mm. like swim bait small swim bait you know now, when you do that small swim bait, and we're already going on a rabbit hole here, do you have to use a different hook, or do you use the same hook? Um, I yeah, it depends on the worm, and then like I use the narrow gape or wide gape, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, other than the sinker, so like it's up to you, like size, hook size, everything, like any kind of bait. So, and then um. This this free rig, what it is about it is like when you cast the the sinker is moving like you know like a free like this. So, uh, and then uh, this sinker is heavy. If you pick the heavy sinker, more you get like you know gap for the bait, and then it's like a falling natural, mm -hmm. like like it. Show leader Carolina rig type of thing, you know. Yeah, it's and, all connected. There's no swivel or glass bead breaking it up. No, no, yeah. So that's why, uh, yeah, it's very simple. And then like, you know, like make make more bait natural. And um, also, also the fish bite, the sinker is right. 
mm-hmm. they cannot feel the uh, weight. And then they're, they're holding the bait so long. And then we can, you know, have a hook set timing, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of the free rig is that I found when I did use it is if a fish bit it, you actually, your land percentage went way up because they would get it so good because it is far away. There's no resistance when they bite that bait and swim away. So we talked about like what it is now, personally, how do you rig up the free rig, right? Like what is your favorite weight sizes? What hooks do you like? Maybe even a couple different baits. You kind of already showed them, but specifically talk about why you choose what baits you do. Yeah. Um, so my favorite uh sinker size is probably five eighths or three quarter because it's a, I'm a co-angler, so that's why I needed to um you know send it to lure. Uh, quick as possible for effective part like a deep water or long cast or you know long mm-hmm. distance you know that's why i picked a heavy sinker but it's a heavy but uh it's a bait is like three and a half or four inch worms so i can be finesse it you know and uh also again so like heavy as possible and then like i can get a more like natural hole when you first drop or like when you popped up so and also um i like to have these like this is my you know money bait for um barkery cleater hog max sense so this is have a lot of small parts to catch the water and then try to be separated so good you know so this is if the crayfish season, uh, like they are looking for the bottom. So I'm definitely going this. And I also, um, so they, they are looking for like a bluegill or a shot type of thing. I mean, I, I use like a barrel shot or a bellows gill. And this is also like catch a lot of water. And then like just, you know, the sinker and the bait is getting gap and really good. Um, also, yeah, two more thing. Like I just use it like four different, you know, bellows stick. Of course, this is a looks like a like a big goby. Mm-hmm. Like no, like a Korea water with like you know Great Lakes set up. I'm always using this bellows stick. Uh, four point eight or five point eight inch. And uh, also, they're a little bit looking up for eating those like uh, little shad or minnows. Mm-hmm. I'm use this like uh, Jack Master. This is a recently the Lake Erie killer. Like I really want to tell everybody, but this is for <laughs> you know just popped up and drop it, and then, like they're falling yeah. like this. Like, you know, I'm sure it's killer in the early spring pre spawn, and then in the fall when they start biting on shad even more. Oh my gosh, this is yeah, crazy. (laughs) Also, they have smell and the flavor, Mm -hmm. so this is perfect combo for me. Yeah, so those are the four baits you almost always have rigged up, yeah, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, you know, we talked about the free rig and maybe some people will associate with another more conventional rig called the Texas rig, as most <laughs> tournament anglers would be um, familiar with. What is the main difference between the two and why should someone fish the free rig over a Texas rig? Yeah, um, I just uh, <laughs> I have another set for a Texas rig right here and I just want to show you guys like. For example, when you're dragging on the bottom, so the the sinker is this position, right? Uh, can you see it? Yep. And then uh, a the little line, bit more. Oh, right. Left. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now you're tired. My camera is right here. <laughs> Sorry. So, so the when when the lure get the bottom, the the sinker is make make the line touching the bottom or hard cover or whatever you know you see yep. it like it bumping like this yep so you get a so much line damage 
and also even like you fishing rock piles or something, this the sinker go into the gap of the rock like this, right? Mm -hmm. But um, huge difference is the sinker most weight is going down this way, and then when you're dragging, they're past those you know the structures all the time, and then technically. The line is not touching. My my pinky is, uh, for example, the bottom. Look, if you have a tension, you technically not touching the bottom. The line is, you know, yep. never get a not never, but uh, is you know better, better than you know Texas rig, not really getting you know like a robbed something, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, you could probably throw it over like a football rig too, as well at times, because the football rig in the right rock situation is going to get hung up as well. So as far as that cylinder of weight, I would assume allows that bait to kind of scurry through and move around cracks of rocks, et cetera. So here's a story. Like uh, I fish a lot of Torito Bend or some Leyvon. Is th- that's a kind of man-made lake? Is a poor, poor like structures, like a, no grass line or uh, like just there, uh, fishing stumps or you know brush piles. And I always I do like throwing the brush pile for this. And I mean I wouldn't say never, but is high percentage they'll come back. So this free free rig sinker and escape the, those like branches or like a little oh, it slithers like, through the branches really well. Right, right. I like and, it. Like, yeah, I make a big one bite inside a brush pile. <laughs> <It's a whole laughs> yeah. So we talked about what free rig is, the difference between a Texas rig, the best mm-hmm. baits. So now let's talk through like exactly how you fish the free rig and when and where you would throw it besides like brush piles or rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's a, uh, I still use in a Texas rig, but mostly hard cover, like a branch or, you know, like stumps or brush pile, rock piles, or, you know, like a shell bed, mm-hmm. um, you know, humps, stage or stuff like that. So, um, because um, this sinker is so like uh, moving so good. So if you if I throw, just only thing I don't throwing for the grass. Because uh, my opinion is grass is a peg Texas sinker is the better because you know when I fish in the grass like the sinker is going that away and a bait is right here and then like all the weed is get there and then and if you have one grab and you set the hook you might not be able to penetrate the hook because it's all right. over the place makes right. sense right mostly a hard hard hard, hard bottom hard cover so that's a go on so then like is there a specific technique on the way that you present the free rig are you like are you casting it out and dragging it do you shake it do you, is it like pop and let it rest like how when you're fishing the free rig technique what is your preferred way to present this to the bass for me actually most bite i make it's like shaking shaking at the bottom so uh first drop i give them a natural you know fall but actually uh what's the difference between like takes the sinker and a uh, free rig also like a movement is like very flexible you know mm-hmm. when you little top shaking or a side shaking like the this part is so flexible and moves so well and a natural you know mm-hmm. Uh, versus Texas rig. So that's why most what I'm doing is uh, shaking on the bottom. And then sometimes I'm uh, popped. And then again, like just sink or drop. And then, you know, like Carolina type of, yep. you know, action I like. Uh, depends on the, um, depends on the, what the fish uh, want the day. And then like I'm adjustment, like just dragging, shaking, pop. The three things I'm doing a combination and figure out the situation the day. Yeah. yeah. 
I like that. So we'll kind of wrap it up here, right? Like your total <laughs> setup on what you throw the free rig on. Are you bait casting it? Do you use a spinning outfit? And mm-hmm. kind of walk through like the rod, your reel, maybe the gear ratio reel, and then your line. Yeah. Uh again, it's a depends on the area though, but it's like uh if I just use, in like, generality, like yeah. what you would if you had one free rig rod and reel and line, what mm-hmm. would it be the every time? So I'm always use like uh five eighths or three quarter. So that's why uh, I just put on a 16 pound uh, floral carbon with like a medium heavy um, six eight because I love shaking. So that's why I'm using like you know short short rod. Yep. So a lot of American people using like seven foot more than seven foot long long you know like uh, fishing pole. But I believe like a more shaking or sensitivity is short rod is better. And then I got I got the heavy sinker, so that's why I can cast far away. And um and also I got the tan gear ration. So that's why uh you know people nervous about you know the you know hook set uh you know ratio, yeah. but uh I I actually, I can catch up those line slags, so then no problem, you know. So, so the fastest gear ratio, gear ratio reel you can find is what you right. recommend. And, yeah. And 16-pound uh, Frodo, 6'8", medium light. Um, yeah, medium heavy. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. that, it's crazy. Like, and that's a great point that you make there is, you know, new age bass fishermen love to use longer rods. And I'm one of those guys, like seven foot, seven foot three. The free rig rod that I use is seven foot, but it's a pure medium action, but it has like a medium heavy butt to it. So it yeah. loads really well and it's super quick at the tip and sensitive, but I have a lot of backbone to drive that mm-hmm. offset, a little bit thicker gauge hook on there. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's another question I should have asked with your setup is like, if you had two hooks to choose, what yeah. hooks would you use? Because we that's the one thing we didn't touch on. Um, so I am always using the Ichikawa hook uh, because it's really like uh, sharp. And then yeah. um, the coating is really uh, smooth and then easy to penetrate it. So... And also, it's never broke off, or you know, like some some hook. Big is fan, broken. yeah. But yeah. very kind of flexible, but it's not too hard. Like a good balance hook. So yeah. Ichikawa PK two. I'm always use like a, a skinny worm, uh, like this, uh, and also the uh, big worm, uh, like a fat worm, a little bit like this. I'm using an SP hook. Hmm. Ichikawa yeah. SP, SP, yeah, got it. So, yeah. love it. So we'll wrap up here on the last thing. If there's any piece of advice that you'd give anyone who's tuned in here, what would it be to instill more confidence for them to catch bass on a free rig? Like, what is one hot tip you would give someone? Um. It, it, it just the you you need to right set up like I, I i told the everything you know yeah. like this <laughs> my whole setup secret and then yeah i don't have any secret and then i could just keep fishing keep keep join a tournament so just build confidence in the technique yep, yep. like yeah i love it that's the, that's the thing i mean yeah practice or you know fish fish all the time that makes your confidence i guess yeah yeah there's there's something to be said about being on the water daily mm-hmm. yeah you yeah pick up on so many little clues so but sakai i want to say thank you i know we talked yeah. about this a while ago to get you wow. out here and glad yeah. we could squeeze it in on a day off for you which <laughs> yeah. you probably won't have many until yeah. like the end of middle of the end of summer so it was good catching up with you yeah um, I wish you the best of luck the rest of this year and until you make it home to New York. And when you get home, let me know so we can get get out and go fishing. So or team tournament or you know, whatever. Even if it's fun fishing, it doesn't matter. I 
I enjoy I, sharing the boat with you. So yeah, I just want to share more, you know, technique I got like down here, and you know, I want to yep. talking about more fishing. I mean, thank you to join, and then like I have another good stuff like I I I more have like a bait finesse thing or something. Yep. Uh, just, uh, let me know if you need uh, infos. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll chat like, here day. in the future, and uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. Yeah, thank you. All right. Have a good day, Sakai. Yeah, have a good one. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode here on the Lure Lab. I hope you enjoyed it, talking about a technique, a hot Japanese technique that uh, I feel like isn't quite in the limelight yet, but I'm sure it's going to be more here in the near future. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show that um, some of the baits that we talked about, if they're available on Omnia, will be listed down below in the description. So you make sure you go and check those out. But uh, stay tuned for next week's episode. We have a bunch coming your way here leading up into summer and through summer and a lot of episodes planned here. It's just finding time for me to connect with our guests and get them on here. So stay tuned for those. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment down below if you've ever fished. It's a free rig technique. If you're listening on like an MP3, your favorite podcast platform, please leave a review. We greatly appreciate that. And as always, if you're new on the YouTube here to the Lure Lab channel, please hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week.